Hello everyone, it's Jordan here, no doubt at the end of my career with this review of Seven Pirates Hate on the Switch. First of all, if this video gets monetized, it will be a miracle. Secondly, since it probably won't, do me a favor, and if you want to support us, well, you can subscribe, hit that bell button, and as I'll mention later on, Seven Pirates H is going to be available physically exclusively at Play Asia. If you want to purchase it after this review, please use the link in the description to do so, as it will help support us ever so much. Plus, we have a discount code, Jordan, for 5% off. So, Seven Pirates H. What is it? It's a JRPG in the Genkai Toki series, the same series as the Moro games. You may be familiar with those on the Switch, but while it is technically in the same series, it might as well not be, because this be about treasure hunting pirates. Arr. You are Pirut. No, they couldn't think of a more inventive name. A lady pirate who suddenly comes across a seal-like creature who claims to know the secret for... <clears throat> chest enhancements. Booby training. Yes, a method by which a character's hidden potential can be drawn out by touching the breasts in a certain way. Look, hear me out. At least it keeps them off the streets. If you can preoccupy them with Seven Pirates H, then, you know, the streets will be safer for everybody. Let's just talk about that bit. Get it out of the way early in case you want to jump off the review early just for the sake of your future YouTube suggestions. The way you shape the boobs can affect what stats it gives you. Big boobs give you higher attack, while smaller ones will improve your agility. I don't have massive boobs as of yet, but that kind of makes sense to me. What am I saying? You can make them softer, wider, higher, lower. Each affects your stats in different ways. And as I always say to everyone that I meet, bigger does not always mean better. You can do this to all the girls in your party as long as you have enough massage oil. I mean, training extract. So these techniques can be done via the touchscreen. You have a good old tap, a rather nauseous drag, a cheeky little flick, and the all-time classic pinch. Obviously, not everyone has the strength of character to do this without feeling like you're wasting your time on this planet, especially in a public sphere. So if you want to do it with buttons, you can, which means that it is, of course, playable in docked mode. The tutorial for this said booby training is surprisingly robust and almost as overwhelming as some of the boobs themselves. When you start off, there is screen after screen of instructions for what in the end turns out to be mindless fiddling, which, funnily enough, is my preferred technique. You set out on a quest to get seven treasures. For some reason, I don't know, I've forgotten already. But you are on an adventure gathering a small group of equally booby-trained ladies for 20 hours of JRPG-ness. There's 3D dungeon exploration, turn-based RPG battles, and cutscenes in a visual novel style format with their very own CGs. There is a main story to be getting on with as you earn more maps, which will uncover new areas to pilot your ship to. There's lots of side quests and plenty of extra scenes to get to know the cast of characters better, usually involving some humorous situation. You'll get a big cast of busty or not-so-busty ladies in your harem, I mean crew, each with their own unique abilities, all of whom need to be fiddled with in order to spurt out their potential, so to speak. It wouldn't be one of these games if there weren't some utterly ridiculous enemy designs. May I present to you the classic mushroom cock, condom head, and unidentified flying nipple amongst other memorable foes. Now, of course, I know what you're all thinking. This is just a joke, right? It's a joke game full of knobs and boobs. It can't actually be good, right? Well, surprisingly, even for me, Seven Pirates H is surprisingly competent as a JRPG. I mean, you take out all the boobage, take out the perverted seal, and you've got mechanically a very solid JRPG. The battles are simple on the surface when first playing, but the elemental switching really adds a tactical layer. And it's a game that is balanced enough that you won't be just mashing the attack button to get through them. You'll be using buffs, heals, ailments. You're always thinking, planning your moves, and I was really impressed with the effort the developers went to for what is essentially an etchy game. This entire game was greenlit on the premise of fiddling with you know what. But they actually went to the effort, they have some pride in their work to make it fun as well. Fun to play. The rpg -ness. I guess for me though, a good JRPG is more than just a battle system. 
I mean, Final Fantasy VII has the most standard battle system of all time, but it's still my favorite JRPG for a multitude of reasons. The mechanics, of course, the story, the music, the presentation, the charm, atmosphere, characters, minigames, locations, and Seven Pirates H, believe it or not, doesn't come anywhere near close, but the battles are pretty good, and it has floppy boobies, so... Everything else is kind of forgettable. The characters, whatever. The story is one you'll half-heartedly read just to pay respect to the voice actors who had to say this shit. I mean, the dude who voiced the rapey seal, I'm pretty sure he lied to his wife that day about what he was doing. Probably said he was having an affair or something just to cover up this gig. Yeah, it is kind of funny, but after 20 hours of innuendos, it drags a little, especially with a bunch of superfluous stuff in there as well. And it does cross the line between, you know, being quirky and just give it a rest, please. I don't personally look for fan service in my JRPGs, but I have to admit, I am pretty sure this will also be a main appeal to some of you out there. This is a game that knows its audience, even if this kind of story isn't for me. I mean, I've recently come off the back of Chrono Cross, which is about different timelines, dimensional shifts, alternative realities. Sometimes you just need a scene where you bash down a door with a perverted seal wearing a bikini as an eye patch. I never thought I'd say that out loud. And actually, I think I might have enjoyed the story more if there were actual cutscenes, because you can clearly see where they cheaped out on the budget. All of the story is done via characters talking back and forth. You don't actually see any of the action happen. You don't even see them standing around in the environments. And I think it hurts the game. Of course, animating a giant kraken attacking a ship would not be cheap, but I think it would have been a much better game if they did so. And I get a lot of RPGs of this nature do this, and it's a compromise that has to be done, but it doesn't mean I like it. I do want to praise some of the visuals and performance though. The characters and enemy models really pop off the screen. I mean, who knew a Titi UFO could look so fresh? However, the environments are quite poor. They are overly basic and small, but that's not an issue, I guess. Although, I do have a problem with the camera. It's just massively claustrophobic. I just wish it zoomed out a little bit more, and I know this game is more about being overly personal, but goddamn, let me breathe. As far as I could tell, the frame rate is rock solid, which did actually worry me for some reason. I think I saw a video of the Vita version, which looked a little bit rough. However, this is a really good port, smooth, no glitches that I saw, and the brand new English translation is fairly good, at least the parts that I paid attention to. I'm sure the translators of this game questioned their role in life when tasked with translating Seven Pirates H, they probably won't bring this one up at the dinner table during a family get-together. And aside from a couple of errors that I noticed, it seems to have been handled nicely. So, as I mentioned in my desperate introduction, this is available physically but exclusive to Play Asia. There was a collector's edition too, which sold out quite a while back, but there is still standard editions too, which should be sent out this week. Who knows how long that will be in stock though. If you want to grab a copy yourself, keep it physically forever, pretend you actually have a tangible pirate waifu, then consider using the links below in the description and pinned comment. If you click our links, then you also support us at the same time, which for this kind of review definitely helps a lot. Plus, in return for clicking our links, you can also get a very nice 5% of any physical item from PlayAsia if you use our current discount code, JORDAN while checking out, yes, my name, getting you 5% off Big Booby Pirates. You're welcome. Remember, it's free shipping over 100 bucks, and this code won't last forever. If you're watching this in the future, and the code isn't working, be sure to subscribe and check out our latest Let's Get Physical video every Monday for the latest code updates. The game is also available digitally for $40 in the US, 40 euros and 35 pounds in the UK. That's a decent enough price. There is enough content, maybe 20 hours for the main story and a good few more on for the true ending. It may seem a bit pricey, but it is a super niche game that wasn't translated into English until now. So that's the kind of price you have to pay for something like this. I think it's worth it. Overall, if you was expecting a big booby pirate game with a serviceable JRPG strapped onto it, you were wrong! What you're getting is a big booby pirate game that is actually a really decent JRPG, at least in its battle system and balance. That genuinely took me by surprise. There's lots to do, although the story and presentation in some areas may leave a lot to be desired. 
But then again, I don't care for pandering fan service in actual stories, so your mileage may be better than mine. This is a game that I went in expecting to smirk at due to its audacity, but came out being a bit more respectful to it. The developers actually made an effort to make the game fun to play and not just to look at, because the battles are really very good and well balanced, tactical. If the story was better and the production value was increased in the cutscenes and that goddamn camera didn't make me suffocate, I'd say you'd almost have an all time classic on your hands. But still, the battle mechanics and content are there and it made it a step up from what I expected and I think you'll be pretty surprised too. That's only if you can get over the fact that a seal is trying to sexually assault women and if you can't, you can just skip through all that superfluous text. A 7.5 out of 10. Hey, I didn't mention booty once. Alright, thanks for watching this review of 7 Pirates H. Will you be picking this up? Do let me know. If you want to pick it up physically, then please consider using the links below in the description and pinned comment to support us, because YouTube certainly won't with this one. Thanks to our executive producers who do support us, Dane Wilkinson, God of Resin, Boombox, Brent McLean, Jonathan Rumor, Santa Tartaruga, Alexander Cato, Jcross7776, Elissa, Punky Dooster, Cartoon Soren, Robotech, Z, Raven Knight, Born Metal Luna, Parsleep Coffee, Isa, Vey, Mental Traveler, Grantsert, Viz, Jennifer M, and Instant Critic. Plus you, yeah, you watching right now, if you watched all the way through, you must be a massive per. I mean, you must be a massive legend because you help us grow and YouTube shows us to other people because the longer you watch, they think the video's good, right? So, if you did, then give me an emoji that's pirate related. Please check out our Let's Get Physical series every Monday for the latest Switch physical news and digital bargains on Sunday, plus a smattering of other stuff to go along with it. We'll see you guys over there. Have a good one.